Hey, 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 you guys. Well, if you are new, welcome to my channel. My name is Shannon, and today I wanted to talk about a subject I believe the Lord wanted me to share on. And <laughs> this first one, see, I don't know. This might get a little controversial for people who are more religious, but I don't care. I'm going to say it how I believe the Lord showed me. So number one, Jesus was not just a minister but Jesus also had a skill. He was a carpenter. That means that Jesus could earn money because he had a skill, right? He did not require the disciples to fund his lifestyle. Do I believe in giving? Absolutely. Do I believe that we should be blessing the men and women who are pastoring us teaching us, um, being a blessing in our lives. Absolutely. And I believe that we give according to what the word of God says. This is my Bible. And we give according to what the Holy Spirit tells us in our heart, or we give out of what we just feel like we want to give. But we don't give out of coercion, obligation. We don't give because we feel like the person in the pulpit is mandating us to give a certain amount. Mm -mm. That's not what we give or how we give or why we give. We give according to what we feel like the Lord is telling us to give. There is a blessing on being able to give to God, but we want to make sure that we're doing it in the right heart, with the right heart, and in the right spirit. And so I love to be able to ask the Holy Spirit, listen, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to give, right? Jesus did not have a $100 line, a $500 line, and a $1,000 line. I don't see that anywhere in the word of God. And so when we give, we should be giving our offering. You know, of course, we know about the tithe or whatnot, but we should be giving our offering according to what we really feel like the Lord is showing us. Okay. Number two, and this is kind of a piggyback on number one, Jesus did not control his disciples. It tells us even when they met, when he came across them and he knew that they were supposed to be one of his disciples, you know what he said? He said, follow me. And he kept it moving. He didn't try to coerce them. He didn't try to control them. He didn't obligate them. He wasn't trying to strong arm them. No, he said, follow me. And he kept it moving. Okay. And so when we are in a community of believers, whether or not that is church, um, whether or not that is a ministry or otherwise, control is not of God. Free will, you know, even our salvation is our free will. And so even though we know that in certain um, uh, uh, communities like churches and ministries, there has to be some level of protocol, there have to be um, some standards of how things are done, and that's not what I'm talking about. But what I'm talking about is controlling another person uh, as far as their desires are concerned and controlling what they're doing as far as how they are serving the Lord. We don't control people. We don't control people because control is like witchcraft, right? Rebellion is as witchcraft and rebellion and control are on the same line. And so we do not operate in control. We don't see Jesus operating in control. And we know that Jesus is our preeminent example of how we are to walk and how we um, are to engage our lives, right? And so if Jesus was not doing it, that means that we do not do it. If Jesus was not controlling, that means that we do not control. He gives us free will. Number three is, you know, Jesus knew from the beginning that Judas would betray him, but Jesus loved him anyway. He loved him too. And I want to ask you today, who is your anyway? Who are you loving anyway? I know so many times we can write people off because they did this to that, or they're going to do this, or we know that they, da, 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 all these things. So 
who is the person that you are loving anyhow? Because in order for us to grow in God, in order for us to be able to walk this pathway to purpose and do it successfully, we are going to have to overcome a lot of things. And one of those things is going to be dealing with people who are going to come against us. Now, there are some people that we absolutely do not need to have in our lives. So what am I saying? Jesus didn't let Judas and Judas's issues hold him back from walking the fullness of his purpose out. He didn't allow offense in. Jesus didn't get angry. Jesus didn't do all that stuff because he was focused on purpose. So as people in your pathway to purpose, you know, try to trip you up, or try to, you know, uh, sabotage you or do any number of things. Keep your focus on your purpose. Keep your focus on the thing that matters most. Keep your focus on why you are here and don't allow the enemy or who the enemy chooses to make you stumble. Okay, number four, Jesus healed everyone who came to him. You know, he didn't ask for an offering. He didn't require that they give $50 or, you know, $500 so that he could lay hands on them and they would be healed. No, the Bible says freely we receive, freely we must give. So when somebody gets in the pulpit and they say, hey, you know, in order for me to um, lay hands on you or for, in order for me to bless you, in order for me to do this, you have to pay. Whenever there is a clear exchange about with an amount and paying for something that Jesus already paid for on the cross, then I would just um, ask you to take a pause. Take a pause and assess the situation. You know, because Jesus didn't tell us that we have to pay again for what he died for on the cross. He died for us to be saved. He died for us to be redeemed. He died for us to be healed, right? And so, yes, I believe in honoring the man or woman of God who prays for us. I believe that, you know, we should be a blessing to their lives. And I have given to men and women of God who have blessed me. But there is no exchange, one for the other, because Jesus already paid the price. Okay, moving along to number five. Jesus was fully God, but Jesus was fully man. He was the only one who walked the earth who was fully God and fully man. And, you know, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 4.15 that he was tempted on every side. He knew what temptation felt like. He had to walk this earth as a full man because he had to be someone that we would be able to relate to. And so he had to deal with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You know, all three of those categories is what every single sin that we will deal with in mankind has to deal with, right? They're all in those three categories. He dealt with all of that. He dealt with abandonment. He dealt with rejection. He dealt with the worst type of bullying, persecution. I mean, to the max, obviously but he still overcame, right? He, as a man, he overcame as a man. Yes, he gave up his divinity, the Bible says in Philippians 2, 7, that he gave up, he laid down his divinity so that he could walk on this earth as a man. And so because he was fully God, and fully man, while he was here on this earth, he was the son of God and the son of man. Okay, six, he grew in favor with God. And although he was God, he laid down his divinity. He had to grow in favor with God. In his walk here, he had to be very intentional about how he engaged and how he related and how he built rapport with not only man, but God. He had to grow in favor. It wasn't just automatically given to him because, you know, he was the son of God. 
No, he had to learn how to deal with multiple personalities and do it effectively. He had to learn how to engage people well. He had to learn how to build rapport. And so, you know, we know that he had 12 disciples and every single disciple had a different personality. Same thing with God. He had to grow in favor with God. And so that should be an example to us to learn how to deal with different personalities, different people, be effective in it, be successful successful in it and not just, you know, not deal with somebody because we don't like their personality or we don't like the way that they do something or we don't like whatever. No, we need to be like Jesus and grow in favor with both God and man, living the righteous life, but growing in favor with those around us. And this brings me to number seven. Jesus had such great compassion for other people. He had emotions. We know he had emotions. He wept. You know, the Bible is very clear about the times that he wept, but he was not led by his emotions. He was led by the spirit of God. You know, the Bible tells us that he only said what he heard the father say. He only did what he saw the father do. And so even though he would stop for the one and even though he would heal and even though he would, um, you know, touch people or whatnot, he was always purpose driven. He was compassionate, but he did not allow his emotions to guide him in his decisions, right? And, you know, ladies, listen, I know there are times where I can cry at a commercial, but we cannot be the type of believers, followers of Jesus that are emotionally driven. We have to be purpose-driven and purpose-driven alone and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Um, the next thing was that Jesus was amazed. He reveled. He was impressed. He was uh, marveled at only one thing. One thing was he impressed by to that degree, and that was faith. And it tells me that we need to, as, as followers of Jesus Christ, we need to always be um, pushing to operate in a level of faith that is great, one that will impress Jesus, one that will make him marvel. And, and we know that faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. And so, you know, I just want to encourage us all to, um, you know, build your faith. Build your faith by meditating on the word of God, the evidence of things not seen. It gets Jesus's attention, you know, it gets his attention. And even though he's sitting on the right hand of the father right now, we know that when we get his attention, there's favor that comes with it, right? And so the last thing that I wanted to share about Jesus was that he stole time away. He went away to spend time with the Father. He went away to have that one-on-one -on -one time with him. And if Jesus, the Son of God and the Son of Man, had to get away to spend some time with God, to be renewed, to be refreshed, with God the Father, then that means that we need to do the same. So today, make it a priority to spend that time with the Lord on a regular basis so that you can expand and grow and cultivate that, that relationship, that connection in that time that we have dedicated to the Lord. That is where we are going to get that strength to follow him in all things and even when it's hard. Thank you guys for watching and hanging in there till the end. I really appreciate it. Listen, if you enjoyed the video, if you got anything out of this video at all, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. If you are not subscribed yet, please subscribe and hit the bell. And I will see you guys on the next video. Thanks. Bye.